shoebox poet. And we are going live. As soon as I close all these boxes that keep on pop popping up here. So, we left off on page 41. Now, pardon that. Crave. I crave your beauty, and I don't know why. Maybe I'm hoping with you by my side, perhaps I would learn to care as much as you. That little piece of love and that bright smile will rub off on me. And I want to feel again instead of being numb to everything around me because your eyes are so beautiful. When I look at 10 a.m., I see a vast ocean of blue surrounded by a shore of sand and memories. And peering into the crystal clear waters of your soul. But I know you wouldn't want me because you deserve life. And being with an old man like me would mean you won't be happy with me after a while. That's kind of a reflection of, uh, you know, as you get older, being an older man and you find somebody that's younger than you, is there what or they not really want to be with you, but that's the choice that person makes, not you, you know. Gif. Being still. You're with you, just listening to your heart beating, or your, to your breathing. Naked, warm, my mind tracing the nerves of the signals from the pressure of your body and limbs thrown recklessly against mine. The art of making love to you, of the joy of being next to you, and feeling the gift of your presence. It's uh, basically having uh, int uh, intimate time with someone. Uh, just this uh, girl I knew, and uh, enjoying that time of being with her. Just a little bit. Bleed. This is madness. My body bleeds just to be near you. And I can't stand it no longer because I want you. Oh God, I want to taste your skin, the bitter tinge of perfume and soap. Feeling your soft skin with my lips and warmth of your body and your hot breath as we kiss. It's the feeling of you and the connection our bodies make when our skin contacts the skin. The need of me wanting to enter you where your soul draws in breath and cling to each other. Same person. Silence. Of all the voices went silent. All of the outlets for self-expression closed, so here I sit with a lot to say, but no ears to bend. Frustrations mount. What's the use when people you imagine were your friends suddenly turned deaf? It's like one day everybody woke up and decided, including family, you wasn't worth fighting for. Even though you never gave up on them, a reason to be this way, you know, give them a reason to be this way. And it just seemed like, you know, when the pandemic <laughs> happened, everybody just like, you know, hell with this, I ain't talking to you anymore, I ain't doing this anymore, and so, you know, why bother, and just like, well, what the hell, people, you know, it's gone. You know, you, you, it's just like, you know, you just give up on everything. It's, so, after a while, I gave up too. A lot more than I really should. Iris. Those are the greenest seas a sailor could dream of sailing. In those calm, what calming ways of a beautiful iris. She's the only sea I want to sail. And the only ocean I want to drown in. When she holds me in her arms because I would lay at the crest of her shore. Letting her ties crush over me in the wake of her flowing hair. And that's basically just dreaming about a girl with green eyes. Tell. Tell me your story because I want to know. Who are you? Tell me about your heartbreaks, your heartaches, loneliness and fears, your triumphs and tragic tales. Tell me what excites you, drives you your dreams and your magic. Tell me what you like between the sheets or how you react when someone pushes those buttons to blow your top as we hold each other, being close as we want. To know the real you 
as I hope you will stay when you see the real me. And that's just talking about the girl that I was seeing for a little bit. Or mopping on that thing. First, if I knew your name, I would say it in my dreams or wherever I go. Just to see you would answer when I called you, called upon you. What would you look like? Or have I seen your face a million times or more? I simply can't imagine how the first meeting will go between us. Will you be shy and never say a word? My luck, it would be awkward. That's how my life has been of late. Maybe you're trying to heal from dealing with a failed love affair. And you don't want anyone to be close to you anymore. I can relate to those things, but it will get better. You will see this in time. We all wonder about that that person we're supposed to meet, you know, if you're single and everything. That one, you know, the one person that's supposed to um, marry or whatever. And just wondering how it would go between y'all. You know, what would that first meeting is? Just just that. There was a few times where the dew would stick like ashes from the fire. From my bed to stoke the pyre. When she withdrew the sheets. Too short. I don't know what I was doing there. So sometimes I'll do something short and not even really realize it. My soul, I traced the notes written beneath your skin. And as I truly each letter was revealed in a tiny goosebumps that rose up from my touch as I connected dots along your body. As my soul hangs on every word, every syllable it unearths until we kiss. And it comes back to a poem that I wrote about um, when you kiss somebody, you know, how their goosebumps is that, is that, that braille, that second language of the uh, soul, that you're from one soul to the other soul connects to each other. I'll do two more. Correspondence. Only a single letter remains from all that was lost when the fire burned away our heaven. The memories of those words written on a scorched page of two lovers, desiring a phantom touch, but words had to make do reaching across the distance. And this is based off that uh, message in a bottle, uh, basically. But in this situation, it's like somebody had uh, letters from when they were writing each other when they were in a war or somewhere away from, away from each other. So those, those letters doing a fire that there's only a few of them that survived the fire and so that's how they were able to keep in touch and you only have a few of those letters left. Firefield. The flames rose ro- uh, rose from her. The flames rose. Her form cl- yeah, rose to cling her form, burning away all her troubles. Waiting in the sun, reclining back, letting the flames pour from their palms like water bathing her beauty. In the furnace of the stars, streams of fire ran down her arms after they dipped her body beneath the heat, blazing embers ignite from sparks that showered her silhouette, danced along her curves with a return to the sun. And that poem is based on the phoenix. And you'll find out I write a lot about a phoenix, because about fires and elements and different stuff in the poems, especially in the older ones. So, I'm going to be jumping over to TikTok in a little bit to do a poem poetry thing over there. Hopefully, I can get it on through live. I'm not really sure. I never, I have never tried to do a live over on TikTok, so it'll be an interesting experience for all of us involved. But all of y'all have a good night. Take care of yourselves. And I will see you next Sunday. Oh, yeah. Uh, So next week I will be in uh, Franklin for a book. uh, At a book, uh, Main Street, downtown on the square in Franklin, Tennessee. uh, Selling my books there. And I will be...
on the September 10th, I will be at Post Playground here in Lewisburg. I will be posting things about that, and also Post Playground on that went that first Wednesday. I don't know what day it is, but I know I'll be doing that. That's the plan. And also, by the way, I will be doing Post Playground at 8 o'clock, play clean, tomorrow. So, over on Instagram. So, if you want to try it, just go over to Poets Playground. Uh, just type that in the search and you will find it and be able to watch over there. So, until then, y'all have a good night. Take care of yourselves. And don't do anything I want to do.